Hello, everyone. I'm Tanya Rivero. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday. Joe Biden is rolling out a new economic plan that includes new manufacturing and tax policies. The Democratic nominee for president is campaigning today in Michigan. His visit comes on the heels of a stop by President Trump in North Carolina on Tuesday. He held a campaign rally similar to the ones he used to hold before the pandemic. Our Skylar Henry has more. Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden is in Michigan today, promising to bring jobs back to America. This president is on track to be the only president in modern history to end up with fewer jobs at the end of his term than existed in America when he began his term. His new manufacturing proposal includes a 10% Made in America tax credit for companies that bring overseas jobs back to the U.S. or increase domestic production. We're going to make sure that any time American government spends American tax dollars, we're going to spend them in America with American companies and suppliers supporting, supporting American workers. But President Trump says he's the champion of American workers, not Biden. Joe Biden's agenda is made in China. My agenda is made in the USA. President Trump says the economy was going strong until the pandemic hit, and he blames Democratic governors for keeping some states closed. On November 4th, every one of those states will be open. They're doing it for political reasons. No, they're doing it for political reasons. The president also says Democrats don't want to see a coronavirus vaccine. The Biden-Harris effort to spread anti-vaccine conspiracy theories only because they know we are close to putting it out, getting it out, and we're going to get it out fast. If I could get a vaccine tomorrow, I'd do it. If it would cost me the election, I'd do it. We need a vaccine. We need it now. While AstraZeneca has put its vaccine trial on hold, Pfizer announced it may be ready for regulatory review as early as next month. For more on this, I want to bring in Skylar Henry at the White House. Hi, Skylar. So the economy has been something President Trump has had an advantage over Biden in the polls. What can we expect to see from his trip to Michigan today? Hey, Tanya, good afternoon to you. Well, if you start to look at some of the nationwide polls, you'll start to see those margins narrow a bit when it comes to the lead that the president has over Joe Biden in terms of how Americans feel as though he will handle the economy up until this point. It's precisely why he's in Michigan uh, touting what he's calling a new manufacturing plan, part of which will include a 10 percent tax incentive uh, made in America tax incentive for industries and companies that decide to bring those manufacturing manufacturing jobs overseas back to the United States and also if they increase their domestic output altogether. So what you're starting to see here is uh, both campaigns really focus on battleground states, battleground, 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 both of them uh, putting a lot of emphasis on these states as we enter into the home stretch before the November election. Vice President Mike Pence is up in Pennsylvania as we speak. Uh, but what we're seeing from Joe Biden, uh, he's targeting Michigan. It's a state that Joe, uh, President Trump narrowly won in 2016, and so he's trying to make sure that he creates this build back better plan that he's uh, touted so far in terms of building back the economy uh, in a state uh, that, quite frankly, has a lot of blue collar jobs, that being Michigan. And so I think we'll start to see more of that. Uh, he's being more direct, and I think we've heard the president in terms of how he's going to make uh, American jobs kind of come back in terms of this economy up, up until this point, I believe. We've heard the uh, vice president or former vice president say up until this point that the president uh, will have fewer jobs at the end of his term than any president in American history. So obviously some sharp attacks here from both sides as they both try to ensure that the economy does bounce back here in the country. All right, let, let's pivot to the Justice Department deciding to take over the president's defense in a lawsuit by Jean Carroll, who is accusing him of yeah. sexually assaulting her over two decades ago. Why is the Justice Department doing this, and who would foot the bill? Well, I'll answer the second part of that first. Uh, American taxpayers are going to be footing the bill for this. That's me, that's you, that's the folks in the control room, that's everybody at home, and uh, the president won't have to put this bill uh, by himself. Now, the DOJ said that they are stepping in uh, on this because they believe that the president is protected by what's called the F. TCA, and that is the Federal Tort Claims Act, which essentially uh, protects federal employees from civil claims. In this case, saying that the president was uh, 
acting as the president when these claims were made, uh, saying that he doesn't even know who Miss Carroll is and denying that these uh, claims ever happened in the first place here. Now, what's significant to, to think about this here, uh, Tanya, is that uh, one thing, uh, obviously, this is going to put a delay on any sort of court proceedings that we would have perhaps seen in the next coming weeks or months, which is good news to the president who is trying to win reelection here. And two, what you have to think about as well is the fact that it, it wasn't far fetched of an idea that the president may have had to uh, testify under oath here, as well as mm -hmm. p p uh, potentially having to uh, submit some sort of DNA evidence as well. So that remains to be seen how a federal judge decides to react to the fact that the DOJ is stepping in here and what they say is appropriate and whether or not how uh, the uh, proceedings will move forward from here on out. But the president has ha, does appear to have some sort of time to deal with this as the DOJ prepares their case as we prepare to move forward. Seems a very unusual move by the DOJ. All right, so the Trump administration has announced it is pulling 1,200 troops from Iraq during the month of September. What more do we know about this? Yeah, so the commander for U.S. Uh, Central Command uh, said earlier that about 5,200 uh, troops that are in Iraq right now, that number will be reduced to about 3,000 troops. And this plays perfectly well with the president's rhetoric that he had in 2016, where he said, and using his words, he wants to end endless wars. Uh, and so what we'll start to see is just the reduction of these troops throughout the month of September here. Now, this is not something that is uh, controversial, so to speak. Uh, according to certain officials, they say that uh, boots on the ground right now aren't engaging in combat, at least that what we think that we what we were used to see in say in Iraq uh, over the last five ten years or so now more so it's more of an advisory role where troops are actually helping Iraqi forces kind of uh, figure out how they're going to do things as well as try to eliminate ISIS altogether. Now, the president has said that he wants to remove uh, troops from Iraq, from Afghanistan, from Syria. A uh, member of the administration has said that he is or they are going to announce uh, some new news about Afghanistan in the coming uh, days here. So that remains to be seen. But as far as what we're seeing with the removal of these troops, this is something uh, Iraqi officials are on board with this. They are okay with it. Uh, and this is just a matter of reducing the footprint in that area uh, to try and help Iraqi officials kind of deal with the issues that are happening in that region by themselves. All right. Well, Skylar Henry at the White House, thank you so much. Thanks, Tanya.